Okay, now I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about a different role that you that you mm -hmm. had uh, over the last year, and that is the Northern Ireland Assembly <coughs> Committee on Climate Change mm -hmm. uh, undertook an inquiry into climate change, um, and you were brought in as an outside consultant on that. I understand. Yeah, special advisor. And how did I mean? When were you brought into? When, when did the process start, and when were you brought into the process? Oh mm, goodness. <coughs> um, I think it was probably about they they probably started thinking about it in the autumn of 2008 mm -hmm. um, they look we're looking around for people who might become special advisors in the the very the winter then mm -hmm. uh, I applied and, and it was a competitive tendering thing mm -hmm. and I was awarded it in I think about April mm -hmm. and it was supposed to be a six-month contract to do very some sundry bits and pieces for them basically yeah. provide expert in input and this was on behalf of yourself personally, not on behalf of oh, yes, Carmel Lane. Oh, yes, <coughs> yes, yes. This was as an individual. And um, uh, was this the first time that the Assembly Committee had addressed uh, climate change? Yes. Uh, in, okay. And what triggered their, 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 their inquiry? Anything in particular? You'd probably have to ask them. I okay. think it might have been um, political interests. Uh -huh. um, at that time, Sammy Wilson was an avowed climate change denier okay. as minister. And I think that the committee felt that that might be a little bit of a, of a conflict between mm -hmm. his role as minister in charge of the unit on climate change uh -huh. and his um, personal beliefs uh -huh. and how that related to mm -hmm. the assembly's view on climate change, the mm -hmm. um, executive's view, the DUP's view, etc. Now, there's some, there's some wide-ranging recommendations, some 52 recommendations 50. in there, 53, mm -hmm. yeah, it's quite mm -hmm. broad. In, in scope, um, what was your what was your assessment of, it, of, of, the, of the product or the, the result? I thought that came it was quite good, mm -hmm. um, and I suppose you'd say, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? But I wouldn't <laughs> actually, because um, it, I was I was an external advisor. I was not shaping the committee's recommendations. A few that I was disappointed. Mm -hmm. I was very disappointed. They did not recommend an immediate act because I think that we require an act in Northern Ireland in order to actually set statutory and deliverable targets. Mm -hmm. um, but in, given that, I think that most of the specific recommendations are well worth pursuing. Mm -hmm. um, my only problem is actually, it's all very nice to say you have 53 recommendations on climate change and for the Assembly to say, yes, we adopt the report. What we now need to see is actually delivery of those recommendations. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting with the um, Minister for the Environment yesterday, and he very much took it on himself as saying, "Okay, it is now my it is my duty and my civil servants' duties in DOE to take these recommendations forward." Mm -hmm. And I think that was very positive. Mm -hmm. um, in this current climate, with a small C, of governmental cuts, of vastly restricted budgets, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I think it's going to be very difficult to take all 53 forward, mm -hmm. and we have made some recommendations on what we think are the top things that should be done. Mm -hmm. um, one of those is the recommendation in the report, which has been reconfirmed several times, reconfirmed by the minister, that we will try and get a government neutral uh, carbon, sorry, carbon neutral government estate mm -hmm. by 2015. Now that may sound a little bit. Um, well, it may sound unachievable, mm. it may sound a little mm. bit motherhood and apple pie. We actually think that's a very, very practical driver mm -hmm. because if you actually, the, given the size of the government estate, you're talking about something like two-thirds of, of the employed people in Northern Ireland would be government estate if you take it in its broadest, which we are obviously taking it in its broadest. Mm. Um, if the commitment is made to actually invest in energy efficiency and invest in renewable energy, uh, practical waste management, et cetera, et cetera, on that whole estate, mm -hmm. it could make a huge impact in terms of driving investment, in terms of stimulating business, in terms mm -hmm. of eco economic diversification, in terms of no getting Northern Ireland to address the low carbon economy. Mm -hmm. So we feel it's really, really very important, and I think that is, is certainly one of my big pushes. <laughs> um, the, uh, Sammy Wilson came back, Now he is now uh, finance minister. Finance minister. Uh, he has come back and said, oh well, we wouldn't want to be providing any carbon offsetting money, we don't have the money for that. Uh -huh. Absolutely, carbon offsetting is a f indicates failure. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about using any monies to carbon offset. We are talking about addressing the issue. The addressing 
energy efficiency, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. The investment will pay for itself in two years mm -hmm. and it will have continued benefits forever. So if we can actually get started now mm -hmm. in terms of that, we can have a massive change by 2015 and I think we can actually reach that neutrality um, with you know, very little in the way of, of, of not quite getting there. Mm -hmm. And if we don't quite get there, we've at least maybe stimulated some, uh, so an awful lot of work in the meantime, and we've raised it on the public agenda. Yeah. We've shown that Northern Ireland government actually means what it says, mm -hmm. and that is not novel for Northern Ireland government, mm -hmm. but it is an interesting way to get government to show yes. that it really does take this seriously. And interesting, because this ties into that, uh, w w I was surprised anyway that the committee report uh, endorsed in a very major way the Green New Deal, yes. which is an issue that I, I know a number of environmental groups have been pushing for both here and in the Republic of Ireland. Um, and they were very receptive to it, and it certainly seems to go with the carbon-free estate in a way in terms of developing the, the, the business interests and, and, the, and the skills for that. Um, uh, so, w did, you, you, did you feel that they were really believing in Green New Deal? I think they were extremely receptive to it. Uh -huh. um, and the reason I think they were receptive to it is because it was not being put forward by just the, the standard environmental lobby. It was mm -hmm. being put forward by CBI, Institute of Directors, uh -huh. um, uh, the Ulster Farmers Union, um, mm -hmm. Strategic Investment Board, etc., 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 the social partners as well. It really is about everybody working together on two or three major projects, um, biggie on addressing fuel poverty mm -hmm. and through that providing employment, biggie on the carbon neutral government estate because mm -hmm. if you take that it'll be a huge driver for, for investment and for business mm -hmm. and for jobs. The Green New Deal is not about the environment, it's about providing jobs, it's about pre pre improving social um, equity, improving mm -hmm. um, quality of life mm -hmm. while addressing the big carbon issues. So um, promoting renewables, Northern Ireland has a huge potential in renewables, mm -hmm. but we need to get the infrastructure right, we need to get the investment right, and we need to stop messing around with it. We need to start really taking it seriously and going for it. Um, because otherwise, the we're going to end up buying um, marine current turbines that are produced somewhere else right. in the world. We could produce them here. Assembly, assemblies committee report buying into the, the critical issues of climate change should certainly help bring in the, the politicians and the business people are there. Um, and <coughs> and we're, we're all there <coughs> on behalf of the environmental groups. What, what's your sense of the, 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 you know, the ordinary man or woman on the street um, as to what level of acceptance there is there on terms of the reality of climate change and its risk or dangers? I think we had a bit of a regression for a while. Mm -hmm. We did a survey mm -hmm. in uh, January of 2008 and it was sort of like 98% 90, of the people real thought that it was happening and 87% and were willing to do something about it and all this sort of thing. Um, we had a bit of a dip because politically all of a sudden it was acceptable to question. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that government needs to come back very strongly now with a communication program, which again is a recommendation from the committee report, mm -hmm. on, no, it is not acceptable to question this. It is, you do not need to have two sides presented on the government. I mean, we don't see two sides presented on whether we should help Haiti or not. <laughs> Surely we don't need two sides presented on whether we need to help the world through this environmental <laughs> crisis. Yeah. It is just, the, the alternative is just not credible, mm -hmm. um, scientifically, morally, economically, in any other way. And we need to get away from this idea that you have to have a, a, a balanced viewpoint when there really is no balance, mm -hmm. because that's, that's bias, that's not balanced.